If you have already watched the movies to every you I have loved before and to me the one who loved you and didn't understand certain parts of the movie watch this video to the very end and if you haven't watched this movies yet you can watch my previous video where I have talked about the watch order and features of this movies link is in the description in that video many people commented about certain parts they didn't understand and I tried as much as possible to answer the questions in this video, I'll be explaining them in details and clearing any confusion you might still have. There will be timestamps in description for all the parts I'll be explaining, so you can skip to the part you want to understand if you don't want to watch the full video. And if you don't find your exact question in the timestamps, it's most likely included in one of the topics mentioned. So watch the most related topic to your question or maybe just watch the full video. First, let's talk about actually what happened to Siori after the accident. The accident took place in a parallel world where both Koyomi and Siori's parents didn't divorce. As we are already referring to worlds as color, let's refer to this world as green. The accident happened with world green Siori's physical body, but as they were parallel shifted, world green Siori's physical body had the consciousness of world red Siori, and vice versa in world red. Just after the collision, Siori's consciousness tried to shift back to her world red and in between when they were shifting, the physical body of world green died. So the consciousness of world green Siori could not return as its physical body was dead. So the consciousness of world green Siori perished and technically world green Siori just died. And as the world green Siori's consciousness perished halfway of shifting, World Red Siori's consciousness lost sight of its physical body. Means, World Red Siori's consciousness could not find the path to return to its body because it needed both of the consciousness to return to their bodies. So if one consciousness perishes, the other consciousness cannot return as well. That's literally the logic shown in the movie. And as World Red Siori's consciousness could not find its body, she became the ghost in the crossroad where the other Siori's body died in the parallel world. Her physical body in Red World went to coma. The whole phenomenon is called imaginary element fission syndrome. And the ghost thing is actually Red Siori's consciousness or in the movie scientific term, imaginality. Imaginality is imaginary particle which cannot be seen or touched, but only Koyomi could see her because Koyomi and Siori parallel shifted together. And as a result, their consciousness or imaginality got tangled in space-time. So as their consciousness were connected, Koyumi could see her consciousness or imaginality. And that's not only the reason he could see her as we saw the old Koyumi in World Blue also saw her. Because Koyumi just had this ability because of his physics. And it was not any further explained. And this imaginary element fission syndrome phenomenon also caused to destroy Siori's possibility. Possibility is exactly what it means, the different things that may happen. Like for example, Siori could get married to Koyomi or maybe someone else, she could become a scientist like her mother as well. There are infinite possibilities that could happen. And these possibilities give rise to different parallel worlds, where in each world you got a different choice or possibility. And the imaginary element fission syndrome destroyed Siori's all possibilities. As her possibilities got destroyed, her all parallel self, who had nothing to do with the accident, perishes as well. Exactly what happened to those each theory are not demonstrated, like whether they went to coma or maybe just died. And other than that the phenomenon caused the possibilities to destroy it also was not explained in any more details. When Koyomi was doing the time shift experiments, he found Siori's ghost in every world. But later, he realized it is the same Siori's consciousness or imaginality. Which meant that whenever Koyomi shifted, Siori shifted with him along because their consciousness were tangled in space-time. So the only way to time shift Siori's ghost was to shift Koyomi himself, as Siori will shift along with him. So Koyomi came up with the idea of sending Siori to a world where they will never meet. And as a result, the, there will be no possibility of the accident happening and thus Siori would be alive. And the world where they never meet is none other than the world blue. So after Red Siori is time shifted to world blue, there is no possibility of the same thing happening again. Because she will not meet Koyomi in that world, in childhood. As a result, they will not flee to a parallel world and the accident will not happen. 
there is no red world COD to time shift and make the accident again as the red world COD is in blue world COD now. Yes, they are merged. I will talk about it later in the video. Now you can also think that they went back in time. So there should be a COD in world red as well. But you can actually ignore that as there were no explanation of how the timeline works. And if you didn't understand what I meant, just forget I said this. Now for why they needed to time shift to H7. I already told that they met at H7 and they had to avoid their meeting. In World Blue where they decided to time shift, Koyomi will not meet COD because at H7 when he had to make a choice between choosing his father or mother to live with, Koyomi chose his mother. That is why he didn't meet COD in that world as she was in her mom's workplace where the red Koyomi met him as he chose to live with his dad. And this is where the world red and blue world branches off from. Before this choice was made, world blue and red were one single world. So world red and blue started when Koyomi was 7 years old. So by choosing to go back in world blue at age 7, they are avoiding the possibility of the accident. When Koyomi performed the time shift, both Koyomi and Siori first parallel shifted to World Blue. They both arrived at the same crossroad where the World Blue Koyomi was also waiting as for the promise. And in this scene you can see old Koyomi talking to Siori's imaginality. But in reality Siori was talking to Koyomi's imaginality. And the orange space you see is the imaginary space which I will talk about later. You can see the physical space is not clearly see-through, probably because they are still in the middle of the time shift process. And why old Koyomi could see COD's imaginality and not red Koyomi's, it wasn't really explained, like why Koyomi could see COD because they were entangled. The, this, much was clear, uh, this much was clear. But then Kazune could see her vaguely, which was because they had a IP coherence. And this wasn't even explained literally, it was just passively added in a conversation. So there are some things which are unexplained or very vaguely explained and back to where I was. After that old Koyomi sees that Siori vanishes in the thin air, which is actually both Koyomi and Siori's imaginality goes back in time and merge with their world blue self. At this exact point you can see old Koyomi's IP device shows error because he is now the merged version of world red and blue Koyomi. The whole timeline has changed now as they went back in time. As they avoided the accident by this, COD's possibility got restored and she became alive in every world except World Red because she is just merged with Blue. World Blue COD who became alive now is actually the merged version of Red and Blue. Both Red Koyomi and COD went back in H7 in World Blue and merged with their Blue selves. Thus the timeline renewed and COD didn't die in the past. So she is alive now as you saw her meeting up with old Koyomi at the end. Though both are the merged version of blue and red, they don't have the memory of world red. Reason is, it's just an effect of doing the time save. There should not be any confusion about COD going back in time and living a fulfilling happy life though as a merged version. But for Koyomi it could be confusing as there was already blue Koyomi who lived the life. So after the time shift, Blue Koyomi's spent life is changed into merged Koyomi's life. It kinda seems stupid but it is what it is. But if you see from merged 7 year old Koyomi's perspective, he lived a happy life and it swapped with the life of Blue Koyomi who has already lived in the timeline. Now let's talk about identity diffusion. It is a phenomenon that was shown in this scene of World Blue when Kazune parallel shifted because her son died. Now there are two types of parallel shift, one is natural and other is optional shift. In optional shift, you use technology to manually shift you to a specific world you want to go. So a parallel version of World Blue Kazune, whose son died, shifted with her so she can have her son in World Blue who is alive. But there is a small risk to doing optional shift. After you do the optional shift and successfully shift with your parallel self, and then if your homeworld splits because of certain actions or choices, then you will have two return points. Thus, when you return, your imaginality will split and go to the two worlds or even more, depending on how many branches came out from your homeworld. This phenomenon is called identity diffusion. I hope I was able to make you understand. So basically, world 13 Kazune's son died, so she shifted with world 0, 
where her son is alive after that you can see in this scene that the value went from 13 to 14 and this is when a word split happened and as the world branched off her home world went a little more distant and thus the ip value increased by one after that, the Kazune which returned to world zero was no more the actual world zero Kazune as she was split. But as the IP value difference were only one, the difference between her and her original self was very subtle. Now let's talk about all the science talk. There were many scientific talk in both movies, but you really don't need to understand any complex process mentioned in these movies. Still, you have to understand the basic things and the most common terms that are used. First of all, the science which explains the parallel shifts and this kind of stuff is called imaginary science or virtual science. If you watched the movie from any pirated source, most likely you got the virtual world. And if you watched it from officially from Crunchyroll, you got the imaginary world in subtitles. Both virtual and imaginary try to make the same sense, which is not existing physically. But the word virtual makes much more sense. So there are two kind of particles. One is elementary particle which exists in the physical world and can be seen and touched. Second, there is imaginary particle which exists in imaginary world and cannot be seen nor touched. Both imaginary world and physical world exist in the same plane of space, but it cannot be perceived by us because we are merely three-dimensional beings. You should have heard the word imaginality. It is the same thing as imaginary particle, but for living beings which is also referred to as consciousness. When parallel shift happens, only the imaginality or consciousness of one person shifts to the physical body of the parallel world. Even though the imaginary particles cannot be seen with bare eyes, the changes of imaginary particles can be traced through elementary particles. These traces are called imaginary element print or in short IP. When someone's imaginality shifts to a parallel world, the IP device used the imaginary element print to see the change in imaginary particle to determine the value of the time shift. And that is how the IP devices work. When parallel shift happens, your imaginality or your imaginary particle change with that of parallel version. And the change leaves behind traces which is imaginary particle print. And the IP device used the traces to give you a numerical value of parallel shift. Then you see how much you have shifted in the divergence of parallel worlds. The difference between imaginary and elementary particle changes gives rise to parallel worlds. In simple terms, the moment you are making choices, parallel worlds are branching out. That's really all you need to know for how parallel worlds are being made, which I'm pretty sure most of you understood pretty well from the movie already. It should be pretty easy to understand the title of the movie after watching the ending of Flim Blue. But I said in the previous video, if you didn't understand, I will explain it in this video. So it is basically just saying thank you. Yes, thank you to every you I have loved before to stay by my side. Now if you ask why every you, as I said earlier, the word Blue Kazune was changed after the identity diffusion. So she was not the original Kazune anymore. So he is saying thank you to both versions of Kazune. But not only both versions, but actually every parallel version of Kazune there might be. And also thank you to every him who has loved someone else. As some other version loved someone other than Kazune, he got the possibility of loving Kazune. It's not like he wouldn't got to be with Kazune if the other self didn't choose someone other than Kazune, as the parallel world is on infinite scaling. But in a small scale of two choices, as other person chose someone else, he got the choice of loving Kazune. And the someone else is obviously Siori. That is why the other movie is titled To Me, The One Who Loved You. A very beautiful heartwarming ending. I hope my explanations were clear to you. And if you still didn't understand something, you can ask in the comments. This is all for this video. I hope you liked this. You can consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this and I will see you in the next video.